Hey everybody, Norm over here. I just want to tell you about my new group, the Jew Italians. Uh, one <laughs> Jew and part Italian. And it's two called Two and a Half Italians. Jews. No, Two and a Half Italians. Two and a Half Italians. Right? Yeah. A bought man and two. That show oh, was Charlie totally Sheen. Jew. Yeah, that's right. Two Italians. Something like that. Well, uh, right. and part Italian. Yeah, so Two and a Half Italians. All right. <laughs> so I'm the Jew Italian style. That's right, you are. So, anyhow. Uh, I went to see Frank the other night at a uh, club, and it was it was really terrific. Tom Thank Jones you. was there. That was yes, really he was. Cool, you know, and uh, he was quite there. Quite a crew of people that that did yeah. your stuff. You know, and you know, Tom was sitting there and he was watching. I was like, I said, I hope he likes it. You know, I'm a big fan of Tom, and I know him, but he's never seen me play before. But at the end of the show, he goes, "There's two songs you wrote in there that I like. Can you get them to me because I'm recording?" So I dropped off uh, "Carry On" and "Wake Up Call." At his house, and then I saw him Saturday. He came over to Sly's house. We watched the fights, and get. I mean, how about this? Sitting in my brother's den, Van Morrison and Tom Jones. I'm sitting there going, "Wow, this is this is great." These two fucking jerks are coming in. <laughs> Keep going. Jesus Christ, black socks and shirts. All right. So anyway, so uh, it was uh, a wonderful time. You know, it was great. It was great. I mean, talking about this guitar, matter of fact, I have been looking for one of these. You know, I, I bought that uh, F4 mandolin from Norm, the beautiful three black, point. Three point. It's really awesome. I love it. Uh, matter of fact, I came in because he's like my Shylock, so I, you know, I'm paying it off since I bought so many guitars this year. I'm making payments. I should know better than to give him a discount because he, not only it's a discount, then he calls me Rod Steiger, the pawnbroker. It's such a deal. <laughs> So here, I'm looking at this, and this is, to me, one of the most fantastic-looking guitars, a Style O Gibson. Uh, I mean, I love how they put the pick guard on. I mean, it's like, and it's like patent-pending oh, numbers patent and numbers stuff. But this is in a really incredible Bakelite bridge. This is really an incredible uh, 1919, year my father was born. Of course, my father couldn't carry a note in a handbag, so that doesn't mean anything. But... This guitar is, this is what people played. We were just talking about well, this. This is top of line. This is what people played if they were serious and if they had the dough to play it. That was like. I hope your fans are going to complain. Oh, his buttons are scratching. Hey, guys, oh. blow me, okay? <laughs> Here we go. We're here. done with him. Yeah, Seriously, yeah, yeah. Uh, go over to Mark. Yeah. Every day. And Mark has something that's absolutely a spectacular guitar. Yes. Stella, this is a Stella man. Jumbo. I mean, would you consider that a jumbo? It's not oh, like yeah, a full set, but bigger than what, what they were doing. Lower, that was a jumbo. This right is there. the blues man guitar. This is a six string version of Lead Belly, who played the 12 string, who really was called the king of the 12 strings. But these were actually a very cheap guitar. This, well, this guitar. Was top of the line, yeah, this was a which real made 50 one. bucks. So this thing is $6,995. So this guitar you, new was five dollars. <laughs> okay, no, That's nine 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 dollars and fifty cents new, but it is extremely rare because even though it's a cheaply made guitar, it's the the very few exist. One of the ultimate blues guitars. Yes, it is, and very few ex exist. And you can tell some brothers were playing on this man. Look at this thing, all scratched. This is this was played. This was this. Yeah, I mean this. That's was, why we put pit guards on guitars. Yeah. Right? But this is like, you know. God, the strings. Are, man, you had to have those, like, migrant worker hands to play this stuff. The strings are strong. No, I'm just saying, man. What kind these, of man are you? These yeah. were working men, baby. I played that stuff. But, you know, it's. Uh, I love it. Coming in the store, I mean, very rarely. I, I will tell you out there, you very rarely see these two guitars. Especially in this kind of condition. Norm? Absolutely. Yeah. You don't really, I mean, I know they're not, but they're just, there's tons of L5s and tons a lot of, this, of history. But these, and this is a lot rarer than that. I've never seen oh, yeah. one of these. Well, I, I've never seen one of these. Yeah, and if you haven't seen it, and, and, it ain't been seen. And not in that size. <laughs> I mean, that's, for that era, that was a really yeah. big guitar. Like, that's almost like a Larson Brothers guitar. Yeah, yeah. One of the first, you know, makers mm -hmm. to make, like, Belly you know, bridge, steel. giant guitar. Yeah, yeah and it has like the pyramid, pyramid bridge. bridge, but also kind of a little bit of a Washburn look, right? Yeah. Washburn had so I bought a Washburn from you. I was so bad. I, I bought two of them. I bought a resonator, not Washburn for you. It was a wood body, and it looked like kind of the front of an old uh, 
one of those cathedral radios. Yeah. And then I bought a Washburn, like a small version. Look at this, really ornate. And I'm so mad I got rid of them because they weren't that expensive back then. But they were, they were good guitar. Like they a bacon were very in good day. Guitars. I mean, it is what it is. You didn't have a lot of choices back then. You know, no. I mean, there were you know there were a lot of mail order guitars, and they made you know limited numbers, and a lot of them you know it wasn't like they had a lot of set models where they just kept multiplying the same thing. Almost each one of them had a little different inlay pattern mm -hmm. or something. Speaking of which, can on. you get in on this binding? Because that binding is pretty incredible. Yeah. Now you said it's binding or decal. That kind of looks like inlaid wood. I think it's painted. <laughs> you were mentioning the fights the other night. I remember I was with you over at your sister's house, and we saw when Mike Tyson got his ear, when he bit the, Evander Holyfield's right. ear. That's you know, right. Well, fights, I, this you know? is why I thought about the heavyweight fight. I give more credit to Klitschko because he almost knocked out this guy who's 27. Klitschko's 41. Right. And the guy was out of gas. So That was a great fight, by the it way. It was a good fight, but I give more to Klitschko because if that was Larry Holmes fighting a 41-year-old guy, that guy had been out of there in four rounds. Well, shit, so if I got in there and I was fighting either of those guys, would you give me the fight if I could just run around for about 15 uh, rounds? 15. <laughs> about 15 seconds. You'd be gassed. <laughs> <laughs> they just hit you with a jab. Please. Uh, oxygen, You'd have to come in with like an iron lung. No, but uh, so we've had a good time, and I've, you know, this year is a very good year for me buying stuff at Norm's, and he always has like that. Bring that over here, Mark. That, that that, that uh, Moserite twelve string. That is kind of. I'm kind of looking at that because I remember Glenn Campbell played one. But I I don't think that's the real finish, but I'm not sure. I kind of think it is. I, the guard, I don't think. Do it's you right. really? I mean, the texture of that finish looks right to me. I mean, but I'm saying is, it's not just so that you know. I don't want to misrepresent. But this is why I love. It's a twelve string but with a big bar. speed. With a yeah. the wiggle stick on it. This is a very, I always thought these were kind of cool looking in a way, but you never know. Hey, do me a favor. Tell me that story you were talking about when Travolta <laughs> and your brother were together and you were trying to pitch your tunes to oh, the movie. No, what happened? This was at the show <clears throat> that Frank told the story. Kill me. Yeah. What happened when I found out my brother was directing uh, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, I drove up because I was tapped. I'd lost my record deal. I, had, you know, I was just, I was doing stand-in work for my brother, for him. So I came over to the office of Paramount. I said, listen, man, do you think there's a shot I can get a song in the movie? He goes, absolutely not. I said, okay. It was the Bee Gees. I'm like, you know, I'm like 32 years old. Done, right? So he goes, yeah, we'll just go write some songs. Just to kind of get rid of me or something. So I took it to heart and I started writing all these songs and recording them in this little studio in Silver Lake, like $20 an hour studio. So I assembled all these songs, which I thought were really good. I come in every few weeks into the studio, into his office, and I would present my songs. And of course, everyone would roll their eyes, like, here comes Frank again. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be in his office, like acting out the scenes and the songs. <laughs> he would that's very good, okay, yeah. So anyway, that went on. I got rejected every time, so finally, the Bee Gees, I read in the trades, the Bee Gees are leaving the movie. This is a disaster. I mean, this is the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. The biggest musical movie, the biggest album of all time at that point, okay? This is a disaster. So, I get a call from my brother. He goes, yeah. He goes, hey. So I knew when he calls, I know the tone of his voice, he wants something. Because usually it's like, I don't hear from him. You know, so it's like, Ring, hey brother. I said, I okay, you want something. I know. I go, what, what's happening, man? He goes, uh, remember those songs you wrote for Staying Alive? I go, yeah, I do. The ones you rejected? Yeah, I remember every one of them. I remember them all. He goes, yeah, we got a big problem. Yeah, I heard. He goes, yeah, Bee Gees have left, you know, and John's all depressed and uh, bop, 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 bop. And these guys, they're depressed. They're millionaires. I got nothing. And they're <laughs> depressed, okay? So. He goes, uh, so those songs, right? I go, yeah, right. He goes, listen, come over to the house. We're going to go over to John's house, and uh, we'll play him. But don't tell him who it is. I said, okay. So All right, so I go over to the house. And it's like a Sony boombox in those days. It wasn't like, you know, cassette wired into the house. You know, it was 1982. Yeah. So I go there and come in. You see John, you know. And then you see Sly. We're sitting at the table. And they're both, like, kind of commiserating back and forth. 
and I can't help I'm laughing though because it's like jazz like, yeah yeah swear to God. <laughs> yeah absolutely back and forth I go it's like Barbarino and Rocky talking and I and, but that's why I'm not looking at John Travolta and Sly my brother I'm looking at Rocky talking to Barbarino like if he guest starred on Welcome Back Cotter Rocky makes a guest appearance so I said, you get those big teeth. Yeah, you swear. Yeah, you has got those big teeth. Yeah, yeah. It kind of, but his eyes are always smiling, but he's like depressed because <laughs> the, the heat's on, man. This is a big, Robert Stigwood is the Bee Gees manager and the producer of the movie. So I said, yeah, we got big problems. So I'm listening to this gibberish for like 20 minutes. So it's like, it was, yeah, I got some songs I, fa- I, I found. He found. Of course, he's going to take the credit. There's some songs I found. I'm sitting there going, I think I'm eating squingeli or something, like something with tentacles or squid or whatever. So I'm there, and John puts on, first thing he puts on is Far From Over. And he's eating like this. And I see, his, I see him looking over. He's going, mm-hmm, rocking. I think he plays like Moody Girl. He plays Never Gonna Give You Up. So like, yeah, this is this one. Yeah, but he's like kind of selling it. And I see John like smiling. And by, you know, it's like six or seven. He's really into it. He goes, man, that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm like, <laughs> he doesn't know. I'm almost choked on my, like a tentacle came out of my nose or something. I was choked at that. You know, I was so Pretty like, descriptive. Just, I yeah, that. I mean, I'm, you have to understand, I'm 32 years old. I've dedicated my life to music since 1965. I've lost everything. I'm a stand-in for my brother. I'm a punching bag in Rocky Three. I get beat up by Sly and Mr. T, and then they tell me to sing a song. So I'm like utility guy. I'm singing in Rocky Three. I get beat up by Mr. T in Rocky Three. I get beat up by my brother. Well, and that now, explains a lot. Explains anyhow. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have John Travolta, the star of the sequel of Saturday Night Fever, loving my music. And my brother's sitting there. He goes, so this is the greatest part. Now, you remember like Godfather 2? Yeah. When Fredo was complaining. Hey, Mike, I'm your only brother. I got to do it. Hey, Fredo, don't ever disrespect the family. Go against the family. Hey, Mike, you don't talk that way. To him. You know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden he goes, so Jazzy, who is that, man? So he goes, it's Frank. And, all, and it was that weird Fredo moment. He looked at me and he goes, Frank? Like I'm like a like a fucking idiot or something. Like I can't do anything. <laughs> so he goes. I felt like I felt like Fredo. Hey, my guy can do things, John. So anyway, that one that leash that you that have leash. To. Yeah, that's right. It couldn't be that like ankle bracelet or something I was wearing. So that Monday, they started dropping my music into the movie. So Far From Over was the opening song to Staying Alive. And I ended up with nine songs in the movie. And, of course, now everyone's pissed off at me. Now the Bee Gees don't want to talk to me. Gary Wright, who, Dreamweaver guy, was the musical coordinator. He didn't get any of his songs in. So all of a sudden, but I was the lowest man on the totem pole. I mean, yeah, of course I knew my brother. But the fine, if they didn't like the songs, they don't care who it is. No, they're they're not going to put them in. And but I'm get, a little pissed off at you too because you're paying off guitars to me, and you had nine tunes and staying alive. Well, also you had, must be so fucking rich. Well, <laughs> well, you didn't have my managers or agents oh, either, so you spent it all on the shirt. That, that's <laughs> right. I did. Yeah, I went all out with this. I got this. I stole. I, I mugged Larry the Cable Guy. And took his shirt. But no, and so that's what happened. So, and that was nominated for a Grammy, a Golden Globe. But it was really a phenomenal, phenomenal turnaround. It's just. All the stars aligned is really weird. And I remember, I will quote your words, Norm said, Frank, you know, now that you're, you know, now that you're making some money, because I used to come into this place, the little place where I didn't have, I had a few bucks here and there, buy something. He goes, you should buy some of these Les Pauls, man. You and your brother should buy some of these Les Pauls. I was trying to convince what him to get Sly to buy a few uh, so bursts, you know. They were like $9,000, 8,500 bucks in 82, 83. Like Not a, that he needs the money, but it might have been the best investment that he was ever advised to. Well, it would have been the best investment I made because I could have like 10 of them. Uh, you know, I could be like Richie, you know, and have all these, uh, th- like guys that don't need the money have the guitars. But those guitars, in a sense, you know, who thought they'd ever go up to 100000 You never even thought that. No. They, like, come on. I had 14 of them, and I got so scared to death I sold a bunch of them because I was just afraid. I said, you could buy a car for these prices, you know. Now, when did it finally come to fruition for you? Like when someone goes, 
that guitar, I'll, I'll give you a hundred thousand for it. I mean, did your like jaw? <laughs> was like fun. well, and I missed the boat by selling a bunch of them too. But you know, when they were eight hundred dollars, people were crying and complaining. Me too. I remember bucks. they're eight hundred. I sold my fifty-eight for four hundred yeah. bucks. I thought I made a killing. Then they were fifteen hundred bucks, and people were fifteen. Oh, no, fifteen. What are you crazy? Then they went to twenty-five, and people were going, Norm, what are you trying to do here? Then they went to five grand, and people were belly aching. And then they went to ten grand. <coughs> when they got to fifty grand, people were going, you know, probably a good investment. But where yeah. did it start? Because it went to like twelve grand, and then it went to. It just started multiplying. So when know. did it really do the big jump? Well, all through the eighties and nineties, and you know, and then the two thousands. But I mean, it was the like millennium they were got still real expensive, multiplying. Right? Yeah. They were like multiplying the value. That's I mean, when something yeah. goes up three hundred percent or something like that, when it's twelve hundred bucks, three hundred percent is thirty six hundred bucks. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But once they started yeah. getting into be the prices of houses and, and places, people were going, "This is art." You I, know, I would say in my life. You know, I've had a lot of guitars. You know, I mean, I started collecting when I was his age, but of course, I didn't turn it into a business because you know. So, I would say probably the Les Paul of all every electric guitar, as far as the, the most prolific guitar, as far that's as that's what got everybody into yeah. the reason the whole vintage yeah, thing. The yeah, whole that's why I'm the Les here. Paul. The Les Paul. Yeah. When people started buying the Les Pauls and people started discovering other guitars, there was a time where Gretsch guitars you nobody give paid away. much attention. You couldn't even give these Stratocasters. There was a time about these big body guitars. You couldn't yeah. give them away. But the, even like Stratocasters, there was a time in my old store, I had about a dozen pre CBS Strats, and it was your choice Colors for seven hundred and fifty bucks. Any color you want. I Any, bought a pink fifty six Strat from Norm with the original case. For eleven hundred bucks, and I thought he was like screwing with me. He goes, ah, and it was really old. It was a pink, worn neck. I'm an idiot. I got rid of that one. Got rid of a few. But no argument but, here. No. <laughs> hey, you know what? That, that's the way it goes. But the thing is, I mean, there's. It, I don't know. I don't think any guitar. I think now it's gonna level off. I don't think any guitar will be like the Les Paul, ever. I mean, well, strats, tellies, yeah. A lot of the times, you know, it's dictated by, you know, somebody playing something. There's a lot of stuff. People always go, you know, what do you think is like a sleeper? I think some Gibson acoustics are sleepers. We've talked about um, that. You know, the Epiphone electrics. Uh, you know, some of the Epiphone stuff, you know, the early American Epiphone, Gibson made and pre yeah. Gibson made Epiphones. Some of that stuff is still, when you think about art, it's, I mean, there's baseball. Look at the one like, you know. So many more. I guys. was just with a guy that's one of the biggest sports. That he just that sold was, a Honus Wagner was, for six million dollars. Tell the guitar. truth. What did you pay for that guitar? I just want you to I gave you the Epiphone. Um, Eight thousand. See that? He had it marked at like eleven, almost twelve. Then I kind of worked him, and then my brother got a phone and fucking went to the body on him, just like. <laughs> Give some body shit, but you know I what? I was trying to just you know make you guys love make, each other. Yeah, of more course. Or, yeah. But it, you know, it's a great guitar. It's it's. As a matter of fact, I was watching Roy Rogers and the Sons of Pioneers. I mean, just the case alone is worth the price of the really cool case. Well, I bought that guitar originally from Rome Johnson. Yeah. Many many years ago. And then I sold it to my buddy yeah. up in Santa Cruz, yeah. and then I bought a bunch of stuff back from him, and that was one of the guitars. And what's and his name wanted to buy it right from under me? Remember that day? Yeah, there was somebody who, yeah. who, who was it that was in here? Bob Dylan's guy, his manager, his friend. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. But he had the money to do it, and he said, Frank, if you didn't take it, I wasn't going to take it. Well, he knows bucks. what a bargain is. That was a good deal, you know, but it, yeah. was, a, it was a killer it's guitar. It's a rare guitar. But, I mean, that's the fun, you know. And I, I want to thank the people out there who have been nice to me. You know, I, I still get a lot of emails. Man, love you and, yeah, love watching it. Norm's Rare Guitars. Sometimes I get a little, you know, off because I get, you know, the dweebs. They were scratching the buttons. Well, so <laughs> fucking what? Just scratch your whatever. Yeah, you're scratching the buttons. It's a fucking guitar store. It's not like a, it's not like a Fabergé egg. It's a, you know, it's a guitar. These guitars are durable. Yeah. Like you, you can tell Billy Gibbons that wears a Western shirt. Hey, watch the buttons, man. Yeah. So, but uh, this is actually a pretty cool guitar. Well, speaking of cool guitars, why don't you grab that other Gibson guitar? Maybe you and Mark play us out with a little something sure. cool. You know. There so, you go. Uh, I'll hold this since uh, I play so well. I can play the one that can't be heard. Let's see. Um. Baby. 
baby Rock me all night long Thank you. 